You, my friends, have dialed into the center of the grilling universe. That's right. It's red hot and ready. And today it's all things Turkish. We're going to be showing you how to make the traditional Turkish shish kebab. That's the lamb dish from Turkey that made it all happen. We're going to be making up some gooey cassock for an appetizer. And if we're lucky, I think we're going to have a steaming cup of Turkish coffee to go with that. That's right. I'm going to be with Laurel from Anatolia Restaurant in the backyard today. And we're going to be cooking up some rich, hot, frothy Turkish coffee. That sounds great. Mm, so come on back and get a taste of John's turkey. You can't handle my turkey. To the grill! Turkish cuisine is a rich and diverse one, and considered by many to be the finest in the world. It's characterized by very pungent and aromatic flavors such as olives and cinnamon, sumac and mint. Today we're going to make you a couple of appetizers to start off before we get into the shish kebab. The first one being a yogurt dish, a thickened yogurt dish called kasik. This is going to be made with yogurt, and we're going to hang this, strain it, get rid of most of the moisture, and it's going to have almost like a cheese-like consistency at the end. We'll get straight into that. What we need is a square of folded over cheesecloth. I have this folded over twice, actually, just to give it a little bit more support. We're going to line a bowl with this. I'm going to take two cups of natural yogurt. This is not low-fat yogurt. Try to get the purest stuff if you can. Full fat. Much better flavor. Just get the rest of this out of here. This is really interesting. As it sets, the flavor intensifies, and it's actually like a very cheesy flavor for those who like it cheesy. Okay, we're going to pull our edges of the cheesecloth together, trying to keep the yogurt in. As you can see, it's already starting to drip. For a period of about 24 hours, you're going to lose at least a third of the volume of this. But that's good. That's okay. What you have left in the bowl, toss it away. Because what's left in the bag is what's important. Okay. You want to make sure that you have it tied down low enough that we're not going to be leaking any yogurt. This is looking pretty good. Okay, you follow me over here. Okay, we're going to pretend that this is the rack in the refrigerator. We're just going to lift it up, holding it over the bowl because this is going to be leaking on a pretty constant basis. And if your refrigerator is anything like mine, you have a dinosaur in it too. Okay. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay, that's good. You're going to want to let this sit for 24 hours, 16 hours at the very minimum. You want to get as much moisture out of this as possible. If you want, you can gently squeeze your bag, but we want to do this in private, don't we? I have a finished version of the cassock. Okay, this is nicely thickened up, as you can see. Nice, huh? Okay, very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to add some chopped cucumber, some fresh mint, which is one of the sort of characteristic flavors of the country. Okay. Got some cucumber. Gonna add a little bit of garlic to this as well. You don't need very much because it's raw garlic and the flavor after a couple of hours is gonna permeate through this very, very heavily. So a clove of garlic at the most. Chop some fresh mint. This is great. This is great stuff. I love this. Let me just grab myself a knife here. Okay. Keep your fingers out of the way, guys. Okay. It doesn't have to be pretty, just fine enough that you're not going to be uh, choking on the leaves, right? Got that. A Little bit of pepper, cracked black, not too much, because it, it is a white sauce, you know. It's going to be all black specks, but we can live with that. A Little bit of sauce, a little bit of sauce, a little bit of salt. Grab our spoon. And this is almost done. This is going to be delicious. What we want to do is let the flavors here marry for about an hour. That just means let it sit, don't bother for about an hour. But I'm impatient, so I'm going to add my olive oil right away. Stir it in. I'm going to have a little bit for breakfast. It is that time. Okay, simple as that, guys. Let's check it out.
Mm, it's fantastic stuff. Okay, while well, my bags are dripping here, we're gonna go outside and check Melissa. I'm sure she's steaming up something dark, black, and sexy. Turkish cooking is a very relaxed environment. The Turks like to sit around and enjoy their meal. Today we've got Laurel from the Anatolia Turkish restaurant. She's gonna whip us up a cup of joe and we're gonna sit back and relax and have a cup of Turkish coffee. Great. Greek olives with a little olive oil, beautiful. What we're doing now is making shish kebab. You probably think shish kebab is just anything on a stick. You're wrong. Traditionally, it is lamb, skewered lamb, maybe a little bit of onion in between, but that's it. Shish kebab, lamb kebab. What we got here, we got some New Zealand lamb. You can get lamb from a number of different countries. New Zealand is one of the largest producers, and their product is generally pretty consistent. It's nice. This is a leg, as I said. This is very, very tender, lean meat. We got a skin covering, a little fat on top. We're gonna have to trim that off. Okay, let's get right into this. We're gonna break this down. This is a bony knife. Got a nice recurve on it. A little edge on it. And we're gonna start this just about where the knee joint is, okay? Gonna cut through. Oh yeah. Right around. Okay, I'm having a little bit of problem with this. This is uh, still a partially frozen piece of lamb, so I think it's time to bring up Big Daddy. You all set, everybody? This is how you chop lamb and turkey. Scary for everyone who's involved. Okay, from this point, we're just gonna strip the meat straight down here. Let's do a barbarian fashion, okay? Straight down the shank bone. Okay, carving as close to the bone as possible as not to waste any of the precious meat. Okay, don't be fancy. We just need one inch chunks. Okay, I'm gonna carve off a little bit of the fat here. It's more the sinew than the fat actually you have to worry about. We also call that silver skin, tendon. The fat will cook off, add flavor, but the sinew won't. It's just gonna create a tough mess. Got that, Robert? Mm. Let's thread up a kebab. This is easy. Just straight on, no worries. Let's add a little bit of onion to this, shall we? Okay, the rest of this onion you don't want to put in a salad, okay? Because we put this on a cutting board with meat. There's bacteria here, so if you're going to use this, you're going to cook it. Okay, poke through. Careful not to poke your hand. Boom, on. A little bit more lamb. Gentlemen, if you're going to make love to a lamb, you should do it on the edge of a cliff. You push back harder. Okay, this kebab's done, and I'm probably gonna reserve this last and to fend off any marauding Turks, okay? No offense, Cass. Okay, let's make ourselves up a marinade for this. Okay, this is easy peasy, man. What we got, got some extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna put about four to six ounces of this in. Just enough to coat our kebabs. Okay, if this is ridiculous, let's, uh, there she blows. A little bit of cinnamon, one of the characteristic flavors of turkey. A little red wine vinegar. A little lemon juice, vitamin C. We got some chili flakes just for the heat. Some cumin, just because I wanted it there. And some parsley. Okay. Whisk this all together, and ooh wee, this is good, baby. Okay, we're gonna pour this right over top of our lamb here. We're gonna set this in the fridge to refrigerate for, or to marinate, and refrigerate, remarinate, for at least eight hours. You know, you can do it for less, it's still gonna absorb the flavor, but you know, eight hours is gonna get, the, you know, all the good flavors of this in at least half an inch into the meat. And that extra half an inch of meat is what counts for some. Why do Turkish men have button up flies? Why? Because a lamb can hear a zipper at 500 paces. Flip this over, just to be safe. This is our eggplant, okay? This is a female eggplant. How can you tell? 
this has the dimple at the bottom. Male eggplants go out, female eggplants go in, okay? So what we're gonna find here is that there are gonna be seeds inside of this eggplant. That's okay, it's a small eggplant, small seeds, it's not gonna be too bitter. Let's chop the base off. I'm gonna slice this down on the bias, which means on an angle, like so. Okay, these are the seeds that we're talking about. They're very small, that's okay. Okay, we got our seedy eggplant. What we have to do now is salt this down. This is gonna extract some of the moisture, it's gonna make it grill better, it's gonna make it taste better, it's gonna reduce some of the bitterness, okay? Toss these puppies in here. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of sea salt into our eggplant and give it a toss, okay? We're gonna let this sit for a couple of hours. Moisture's gonna drip out of it, it's gonna be ready to rock. Okay, when we come back, it's shish kebab heaven, baby. Don't miss it. The Turks love to eat. Ask a Turkish man about his food and his eyes just light up. It's not the dish that matters. It's the smell, taste, passion, and pleasure. Today we're in the backyard with Laurel from Anatolia Turkish Cuisine. And she's gonna whip up some coffee for us, Turkish style. It's said to be the strongest coffee in the world. Is that right? Yeah, it's pretty strong, and it's a special mix of Colombian and Arabic beans, actually. Okay. So what are the main differences that set it aside from normal coffee? Well, regular it's coffee? Uh, very, very finely ground, and the grounds are actually served in the cup when you uh, drink the coffee. All right, let's get started. What goes in first here? Well, first we put some of our coffee in. As you can see, it's very finely ground. Put a heaping spoonful in there. Okay. So just one spoonful of the coffee. And uh, if you want sugar, you have to actually have to add it ahead of time, because uh, after the coffee's made, it's, uh, if you stir in sugar, it'll stir up the ground, so we can't okay. do that. And then we add one cup of water. Now this is a little Turkish coffee cup, so this is uh, what we'll serve it in. We'll use that to measure as well. Okay. So if you're using a regular cup, just use a regular cup of water. Well, you'll have to adjust the quantity of coffee accordingly as well. Okay. Okay, just light up our handy dandy burner here. So we're gonna light up the flame and get her going here. All right. Now the key here is to bring the coffee to a boil but not boil it too much. We will like to have a bit of foam on top, and if you heat it too much, that foam disappears. Okay, so about how long will this take? Maybe 45 seconds, something like that. All right. Not very long at all. This is for one portion. Okay, Melissa, looks like our coffee's just about right now. Okay, great. And what's the consistency? Is it a little bit thick, or? Uh, it's, the liquid part is quite like just regular coffee, but oh. at the bottom, there's quite a thick mud. And it smells really strong. That's right. So how's your first sip of Turkish coffee? It's great, a nice strong flavor and sort of like a mocha hint. Yeah. Okay, well stay tuned boys, because Laurel and I are gonna spice it up in the backyard. It's only about the meat. <laughs> Bet you didn't think that coffee had anything to do with the ball and chain. Well, don't be scared boys, but Laurel tells me that in Turkey, it actually is involved in getting hitched. That's right, Melissa. Uh, traditionally, as part of the engagement process, a groom's family comes to the bride's house and she makes them coffee. Ideally, it should be nice with lots of foam on it, and that means she has a suitable wife. Okay. However, if she decides she doesn't want to marry this guy, she'll put salt in instead of sugar, so you know right away that she's not willing to get married. So if the coffee sucks, take the hint. Now, there is something special about the sludge left on the bottom of the coffee cup. This is actually good for your hands, is it not? That's right, it helps to exfoli exfoliate and moisturize at the same time. Okay, so it's the oil that's in the coffee bean. That's right. This feels really weird on your hands, actually. It's like wet sand going into your hands. You can feel it exfoliating. Thanks for being with us today, Laurel. It was really great. Thank you very much, Melissa. had a great time. Forget about the wussy manicures, guys. Slap some of these grinds on your hands and soften them up, because how manly is this? It's good. That's, that's beautiful. Okay, guys, we're working with eggplants today. That's the last one we're batting, so the next ones are grilling, okay? I showed you earlier, we had salted these babies down. Take a look at this. You squeeze that. See that moisture coming out? That's what the salt has done. It's extracting all the moisture. This is gonna grill up to a fantastic, tender consistency. What we need to do, we need to get rid of the salt, the excess salt on here. Just wipe it off, give them a little squeeze. Shake the water out. We're gonna get these oiled up and onto the grill post-haste. These take a little bit of time on the grill. 
Otherwise, if you don't get them cooked through, they sort of have the consistency of a tampon. That's what I've been told. Very fibrous, bloody mess. Okay, little extra virgin olive oil. Keeping up with the bat theme, we got our cracked black bat pepper. That's good, huh? I'm gonna crank this puppy open and see what we got. We got lots of nice heat happening. If you can hold your hand five inches off this grill for about 10 seconds, it's not hot enough. As you can see, that wasn't 10 seconds, so this is ready. Toss them up nice and good. Get them all lubed up, straight onto the grill. Okay, we're cooking with uh, fairly high heat today because we want to get these cooked very quickly. Keep an eye on them though. We're gonna turn them twice per side. We're gonna get nice hash grill marks, okay? Okay, while these puppies are grilling, I'm gonna close this down just to speed the process up a bit. We need to make a dressing for our grilled eggplant salad, okay? This is very simple. Got a little bit of red wine vinegar. That's about four ounces. Got some, a little bit of lemon juice, say two ounces or so. Got some chopped parsley, about a quarter of a cup. One clove of chopped garlic, which is ample. We got some tomato happening. This is the other salad ingredient. The rest is just marinade, okay? A little bit of extra virgin olive oil again. And this is gonna taste fantastic. Okay, let's get this happen a little bit faster. That looks good to me. How about you? Good. Now we're gonna add our kebabs to the grill. These things have been marinating for about eight hours or so, so these are ready to go. Look at that. Check this out, man. That's beautiful. We're gonna cook these to a medium rare doneness. You know, anything more than that's really a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. You can burn it up all you like, but just don't invite me over, okay? Okay, to this, we're gonna add a little bit more ground pepper. And we need a little bit of salt, so, uh, oh salt boy, we got some salt. I'd like to use a little bit of coarse salt here because it's gonna dissolve quickly on the grill. Thank you, salt boy. It seems like an awful lot of salt, but really it's not. Most of it's gonna cook off. This is the idea of seasoning before and while you're cooking as opposed to putting salt on after. When you put it on before, it seasons your food beautifully but doesn't retain a lot of the sodium. It just brings the flavor out. That's what you want. Okay, let's turn these babies over. Okay, we're getting nice grill marks here. That's just about the perfect time to turn these. It's starting to tender up a little bit. We're still about five minutes off on these though. But that's as dark as you want your grill marks. In fact, that's just perfect. So we're getting a nice golden color here. That's exactly what we want. The meat, on the other hand, well, that's just ready to turn as well. How about that? Beautiful. Okay, these are just about there. They should be finished around the same time as our eggplant in just a few minutes. When I come back, what I'm doing, I'm greasing up my chili, I'm throwing it on the grill. It's gonna be super hot fun. So stick around, right? We'll see you in a minute. It's all about fun. You're in a caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay guys, this eggplant looks fantastic. Nice and tender. Okay, no more of that tampon edge to it. Okay, we're gonna put this down here. Get it off fast. You don't wanna be dripping the oil all over because this stuff does wick up the oil. But nothing's wrong with that. Okay, we're gonna chop it, ro chop it roughly. It's only about the meat. Okay, and straight in to our bowl. That was really messy, I know that, but okay. Forgive me. Okay, give it a stir. We wanna keep this warm, or at least just above room temperature. This is gonna be a fantastic base for our kebabs. Straight down on the plate. That looks great, doesn't it? The colors are really vibrant. The flavors are gonna be really earthy and fresh. That's great. Let's get our kebabs happening. Be careful, make sure you grab this with a cloth, okay? Because I can't stress that enough, because this is before 500 degrees. Okay. Now 
That could have been your finger, that noise. Robert? Robert? Mm -hmm, yeah. Why don't you try a piece of this? <laughs> Tell me what you think. <laughs> okay, he's uh, obviously has some lamb issues. Okay? That's ready. Hey, darling. What do you got there? Mm, I can't get enough of this creamy stuff. It's great. Ooh, I know you can't. Keep talking like that. Tell me what you're doing here. You know what I'm doing? I'm making a Turkish salad. Basically, it's just romaine lettuce. Okay. There's a little bit of feta cheese happening there. We're going to put this on this platter. I'm going to pop in and help you out here. Sure. You can, you can just crumple that up, sprinkle it over the top. All right. And this is so easy, but it's so fresh. You know, the best things in life are simple. A simple woman, fantastic. Unfortunately, those don't exist. <laughs> okay. Toss these on. You can leave in big chunks if you like. I like lots of big chunks of cheese. Oh, you're the cheesiest, baby. <laughs> okay, a little bit of cucumber. This is English cucumber, which is basically a seedless variety. I'm leaving the skin on because I don't mind it. Some people do, give some people gas. And he chops them up Lorena Bobbitt style. Ow. Okay, we got a little bit of lemon juice there. Mm. Extra virgin olive oil. But you olive don't oil see the too sink. Often. <laughs> this is uh, this is above 13 years of age. Ooh. Oh, that tastes great. Of course it does. This is Turkish food at its best. Mm. Prepared. Beautiful. Mmm. Lamy. Saucy. Spicy. You know what? And red hot and ready. From the center of the grilling universe. The home of smoky goodies. Ciao, guys. See you later.